Mnuchin and White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows discussing their discussions uh, with the Speaker and the Democratic leader, which will resume this afternoon. As all of you, I think, have already written, the pattern is that they um, meet and then uh, Mnuchin and Meadows come by my office and we talk about what's uh, transpired. I think they have said that there's not a whole lot of movement yet, but a feeling that it seems to have been expressed that we'd like to get an outcome. Uh, I certainly hope we can. Uh, the coronavirus is certainly not over. It's still a, an enormous problem. It's still affecting communities all across uh, the country. And I think the American people would like to see us working together and getting an outcome like we did back in uh, March and April. John? Thanks, Leader. And we all know that uh, back in, I don't know exactly what month it was, but Several weeks ago, the uh, House Democrats passed their three and a half trillion dollar Heroes Act, which uh, at the time it was suggested, and not just by us, but by lots of um, other folks, that it wasn't a serious effort. In fact, the New York Times, the Democrat leader's paper of record, uh, came out and said, This is a messaging bill, it's not a viable piece of legislation. And so, ever since uh, that time, we have been uh, looking at what we've done already. Uh, making an assessment about what's working and not what's not working and getting feedback about that and came up with uh, I think a very targeted fiscally responsible approach uh, to dealing with the crisis that we're now in and um, and started to in, in good faith uh, suggest to Democrats that it's time to start negotiating uh, the next phase of the relief bill they responded passed the HEROES Act so Mnuchin and uh, Meadows have uh, been trying to sit down with them and, and come up to, a, again, a reasonable uh, common sense uh, solution to uh, moving us forward in, in, or, in, in dealing with this crisis. And uh, their response has basically been pass the HEROES Act. And so last week, uh, Ron Johnson came up with an idea to extend the unemployment benefit um, and uh, make sure that uh, those who are still unemployed, and there are a lot of them in this country, continue to receive a plussed up benefit, not to the extent that it currently was, and the Democrat response was pass the HEROES Act. And so Martha McSally came up with a one-week extension of the existing $600 bonus, uh, unemployment bonus, and, um, and the Democrats response was pass the HEROES Act. And I think it's pretty clear, um, should be clear to the Democrats, we are not going to pass the HEROES Act. It is not a serious piece of legislation. Um, but. We think that there is, uh, there is common ground that we can find. Uh, if they are serious about sitting down and coming up with the next phase of uh, coronavirus relief, and it is targeted, it is fiscally responsible, and it does address the needs that are out there uh, among the American people when it comes to their health care, uh, schools reopening, uh, getting people back to work, creating jobs, uh, we hope that they will get serious about it. Republicans are. We want to get a deal. Uh, we hope that the Democrats will give up on this uh, futile idea of trying to pass the HEROES Act and actually sit down in good faith and try and negotiate a real solution. Well, the Democrats once again are providing a roadblock to progress in our country. And Nancy Pelosi and her deputy, Chuck Schumer, continue to say no, no to an agreement, no to a deal. Because it appears to me that for the Democrats and those two in particular, it is all politics all of the time. I'm convinced they actually don't want an agreement, that they don't care what the consequences are for the American people. And we've all been home. We've been traveling around our states. We're talking to people, listening to what they have to say and what they really want in a piece of legislation. What I'm hearing is people want a path forward, a path forward with regard to the disease, testing, treatment, a vaccine. They also want safety, ways to have make sure there is money for states and communities so they can safely reopen the schools, get kids back to school. And common sense solutions like these are things that the Republicans are going to continue to propose in spite of what Nancy Pelosi continues to do, talking about her $3 trillion fantasy island bill, which seems to be listening to her, her way or the highway. My way or nothing else is what Nancy Pelosi says to the point, and Senator Thune made reference, when this thing passed the House, 
The New York Times, so everyone can see it, this was what the New York Times said. This bill was more a messaging document than a viable piece of legislation. It was never intended as a viable piece of legislation. So as we travel around our home states and we talk to people, no one comes up to us and says, why don't you pass something that gives tax breaks to millionaires and billionaires in California or in New York? Nobody comes up to us and says, why don't you pass a bill that provides bailouts for New York or for Illinois? No one comes up to us and says, why don't you help the people that are selling pot to have better banking opportunities. Nobody comes up to us and says, we need 50 million more dollars for environmental justice or 10 million more dollars for the National Endowment for the Arts. And I will tell you, that is just the tip of the iceberg in what's in Nancy Pelosi's $3 trillion bill. Coronavirus is not a time. It's not a time for the Democrats to continue with their runaway spending. This is a time to focus on a path for the future of helping people with the disease, getting kids back to school, and get Americans back to work. Well, let's just go ahead and talk about the HEROES Act just a little bit more. About that same time when the act came out, uh, one estimate was that a third of what was in the HEROES Act had nothing to do with coronavirus. Um, $900 billion, almost another trillion dollars, uh, was state and local assistance. Is obviously something we don't agree on but can be negotiated. The other trillion dollars we're probably pretty close on. Now, we'll never beat our friends the Democrats when it comes to willingness to spend money. On back to school, which, by the way, for lots of schools starts next week. A lot of colleges start next week. A number of schools around the country start next week. If you're going to help people get back to school, you need to help them right away. They had $100 billion in the HEROES Act. We had $105 billion in our bill. So the Democrats said, well, really, we were off a little bit. We need $400 billion, not $100 billion. We're not going to win that spending fight. But the truth is, when both of us had to put pencil to paper, we both came up with about $100 billion. We had $15 billion for child care to help with child care. They had $7.5 billion. They saw our 15. They decided they needed 40. But if the real numbers are 7.5 or 15, we should be able to work this out. People are going back to school. People want to go back to work. They can't do either one without getting back to child care you can afford for many, many families. Uh, we need to solve these problems. We don't need to solve them 90 days after they needed to be solved. We need to solve them right now, and I hope we can. This week, our schools back in Iowa are finalizing their plans. They're presenting those plans to superintendents. They're laying out the classrooms and how that will work this fall as our kiddos go back. But we still do have moms and dads that are trying to figure out, can I go back to work? If there's virtual learning involved, do we have child care for those children so that they will be in a situation where they are learning and just not left to their own devices at home? And we still do have a lot of folks that are unemployed in Iowa. And we don't know if those businesses will reopen or be able to do that safely right away. So we still have folks that need support. So what I'm asking is that the Democrats give up this my way or the highway attitude and a winner take all uh, and come to the table. We really need our friends over the aisle to sit down with us and visit about the differences that we have between the HEROES Act, which is a $3 trillion um, boondoggle that was out there, a third of that spending not even related to COVID. Sit down with us and let's figure out what our constituents actually need to get through this pandemic, what they actually need to help their children go back to school what they actually need to help them become employed again. Those conversations are not happening because they are so set on the HEROES Act and $3 trillion that they're willing to push away any negotiations offered by Republicans. Folks, we got to get over this. Got to get over this. Let's sit down and let's do it the right way. Thank you.
Well, Republicans are intently focused on doing what we can to staunch this coronavirus and get our workers and our students uh, back to work and school as, as quickly as possible. That's what the American people want us to do. Unfortunately, Democrats have been foot dragging. Uh, they seem to be playing politics uh, during this critical time for our country instead of solving problems uh, in a bipartisan way. Nancy Pelosi and far left Democrats um, are too attentive to November and not attentive enough to what's happening here and now. There are people hurting, people out of work, people uh, who are anxious about the future, and we need to come together. Just yesterday, over 100 major business executives, very prominent names like Howard Schultz, indicated that our small businesses in particular require additional assistance. They need access to long-term working, working capital loans like Senator Bennett and I have put forward in our Restart Act. I will quote from the letter signed by over 100 of these prominent business leaders. At this moment of crisis, we urge you to transcend partisanship and form meaningful agreement on an assistance package to help our struggling businesses and, in turn, tens of millions of Americans. The time is now. We're in the middle of one of the worst economic meet public health crises in American history. Let's stop playing games. Uh, the Democrats need to meet us at least halfway and uh, continue to work on behalf of the American people. Leader McConnell, I know there have been a variety of proposals, but at this point, what do you believe the consensus Senate Republican view is on how large the federal unemployment insurance benefit should be per week and how long it should last? Well, I think I've made it very clear for some time now, if you're looking for a total consensus among Republican senators, you're not going to find it. So we do have divisions about what to do. What we're hoping for here is a bipartisan proposal negotiated by the President of the United States and his team who can sign a bill into law and the Democratic majority in the House that can appeal to a significant percentage of Republicans in the House and Senate. That's where we are. On the unemployment issue, we all know it needs to be solved. We don't want the expiration to continue. Uh, what we've suggested is a short-term fix, as others have indicated. They've objected to that. A better outcome would be to get to a total solution sooner rather than later, and that's what I'm encouraging uh, everyone to do on both sides. But isn't part of the challenge with this negotiation that the negotiators know what the Democratic negotiating position is, but it's unclear what the Republican position is? It, it, it's No, that's not a big challenge um, at all. I'm not anticipating a 100 to nothing vote in the Senate this time. I said that in the very beginning. I said it when we laid down our trillion dollar heel sack. Uh, I don't think we're going to have a total consensus in this round. The atmosphere is much more partisan than it was back in March and April. That much closer to the election. So I don't think the definition of success here is whether we have a unanimous vote. I think the definition of success is, is the product something that will actually make a difference? Liability protection, kids back in school, PPP replenished, health care, something that will actually make a difference. And in addition to a solution to this unemployment problem, we know it's going to be unacceptably high for a long time. We have a role to play in that. We've argued about just how generous it should be in terms of getting people back to work. And we're advocating sending another $1,200 check to those people who've been really hurt by this, a significant percentage of whom are in the hospitality field. They work for hotels or restaurants. So we're ready to help. And hopefully we can, as other speakers have pointed out, get rid of the trillion dollars that's unrelated to the problem and hone in on what is directly related to the problem. Yeah. Nancy Pelosi, the House Speaker, seems to have suggested that $600 per week for federal benefits is her red line. Mm -hmm. Do you think a bill with that amount of money for unemployment could pass the Senate if the President were to say he wants that too? 
I think I'm pretty safe to say that there are plenty of Re Republicans in the Senate who may not vote for a package if that's where it ends up. But we know this is going to be a negotiated settlement. I just said it's not going to produce a come by eye moment like we had in March or April where everybody voted aye. But the American people in the end need help. And wherever this thing settles between the President of the United States and his team that have to sign it into law and the Democrat not insignificant minority in the Senate and majority in the House is something I'm prepared to support, even if I have some problems with certain parts of it. Thanks, everyone. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah